I want you to practice disappointing people. I mean, making decisions that are purposeful to your plans that empower you and yet don't please other people. It's a practice because it doesn't come naturally to kind-hearted people like you and me. You know, I used to be very afraid of disapproval. Uh, probably different reasons why I come from an Asian heritage and we are very, uh, tend to be collectivist, conformist. Um, I came to the country at a young age. My, we, we immigrated here, my family did at a young age. So trying to fit into mainstream culture meant I was afraid of disapproval. And just like you, I'm predisposed to being a kind person. And so I don't want to disappoint other people. But what I've found to be extremely important, if you want if, to be able to build a sustainable, a personally sustainable business with good boundaries, right? That, that financially is thriving is I had to practice the characteristic of making decisions that other people don't like. And whether it's clients don't like my decisions or you, my audience, don't like certain decisions I make, I've had to practice being a rebel, <laughs> okay, in other words, or saying things that might disappoint other people in my industry. But it is really important to practice these things because it is important to be kind yet firm. Okay, so when we, when we make decisions that disappoint other people, we don't have to do it in a mean or harsh way. We can do it with kindness to say, no, but thank you, right? Thank you, but no. Or I'm going to raise my rates now, and I know it's not going to be as pleasant for some of you, but I need to do this because it's part of my plans uh, in order to reach the goals that I need to reach. I need to raise my rate. You know, I, I'm not doing it right now, but I'm just saying, I, you know, working with uh, clients in, in the past where they've had to raise rates, it's really hard for them. Oh, what if people remember my old rates? Let them remember your old rates. So here's, here's, a, here's a really important uh, practice. I mean, part of this practice is to be okay with how disappointed other people feel about your decision. It is such an empowering and important practice to sit with, ah, these people are disappointed. Am I going to be okay? Well, it doesn't feel okay right now because it's not natural. Even as human beings, we evolved to be part of a tribe. We don't want to be ostracized by the tribe because being ostracized in the past of our humanity meant being put out into the woods where we would die instead of being in the village. So we evolved to want to conform, okay? But not, that's no longer helpful in this day and age to conform, especially when you're trying to build an authentic business, right? You can't be a conformist. You have to go your own way in terms of the things that you're passionate about, the topics that you love to talk about and the decisions you make for your business that keep great boundaries with clients, with audience members, with partners or whatever. Okay, so it's practicing, oh, I just disappointed people. Let me feel into that. Am I still okay? Am I gonna be okay? Am I gonna be okay? Yes, I'm okay. And then as you experience more experiences like that, you grow stronger, but you have to start somewhere and you have to disappoint people and just feel it and just be like, okay, I'm not dead. You know, uh, yes, it feels badly right now, but I know that if I just sit with the bad feelings, you know, and, and let that pass, then I realize, oh, I'm okay. The storm came and gone and I'm still here. And once you have one experience of the storm, the next storm, you're a bit more confident and the next one, you're a bit more confident. And then you can have really big storms come and come and go and you're perfectly fine. You can still make decisions in a grounded and empowered way and just let the storms pass. Don't care what, not, not that you don't care about other people, but you care more about your purpose. You care more about your purpose than how other people feel. Because here's the thing, 
you might say, well, George, I did something to make other people feel badly. Is that true? Wow, you're giving yourself a lot of power. Other people feel badly because of their entire life's experiences. You are just one, what you did was just one, you know, half a percent, 0.1 percent of their entire life's experience, probably smaller than that, actually. They've had many, many disappointing experiences that led up to this point of you disappointing them. And you think, oh my God, it's my, I disappoint, it's my job not to disappoint. No, no, no. And your job is to follow your purpose and to do it in a kind and loving way as possible. That's your job. However people feel is however people feel. You need to learn to be okay with that. And by the way, if you are kind in disappointing others, you are giving them practice and being okay with reality. Because they usually have had, when they encounter reality, it's usually harsh. Uh, uh, when I say reality, when they encounter something that disappoints them, it's usually harsh or maybe people are mean or whatever. But in this case, you're kind and still disappointing them. So they're like, okay, this is a more positive experience of disappointment. That actually helps them. So in what ways can you practice disappointing others? You can practice making decisions that others don't like. You can practice not getting, pack, not getting back to people quickly. Some of you just feel pressured all the time to get back to your emails, respond to emails quickly and fully. Okay, that's another one. When I respond to emails, I often don't say, hi, John. I just go right into the email. I don't have a greeting. Now, I usually end my email on kind of a whimsical note or try to end it on a kind of a kind sounding note. But I don't have to say, hi, John, or hi, Jane, or whatever. I don't. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I have to practice not doing it more often. Um, and my emails are often shorter than what someone sent me. Now, if I'm answering their question, it might be longer. But uh, some, you know, as, as the thread goes on, uh, my email gets shorter and shorter. You know, and I'm OK with that. I don't have to please them in how I respond. I practice disappointing my clients. You might say, oh, George, I don't want to be your client. No, it's, you actually learn how to be kind and firm when you're working with me, right? So I practice disappointing my clients, which some of you watching this. I practice disappointing some of my audience members. I practice disappointing some of my partners. Now, here's the thing. So practice not making decisions others don't like, as long as it's in your purpose, right? And then you're being kind about it. Practice not getting back to people quickly over messages, emails, texts, whatever. And, and practice not having the same length of emails that they write. Practice, uh, I have a whole list here that I might show you in the, in the blog post. Practice um, not knowing whether people will like what you publish or what you launch. Oh, will people buy this? I don't know, people will buy it at that rate. Practice not knowing and doing it anyway because it empowers you. And just observing the results and go, huh, well, that's interesting. Nobody bought. Well, I'm okay with that. Storm goes and passes. I'm stronger in being able to make experiments. Great, I'm gonna make it. And then practice making big changes and watching other people's reactions. I don't care if people call me a flake. It's their, it's their job to manage their own reactions and emotions and their own judgments. They can judge me however. Practice being judged by other people. Hey, this person just judged me. I get to practice being okay with that. Because the more you're okay with that you are, the more you're able to make unique decisions and create unique content that will rub some people the wrong way, but really, really help other people who are right for that content. So instead of disappointing other people, I want you to be more concerned with being connected to your purpose. Okay, I want you to be more concerned with having a plan that you are excited to work on. Not having a plan that will make sure others feel good, make sure you know, your coach, even me, you know, isn't disappointed by your decisions. I'm proud of you. If you make a decision that doesn't go with my wishes, great, well, let's experiment with that and see how, see how it goes because I might be wrong, right? Pract be more concerned with it, whether your schedule is sustainable for you rather than whether you're pleasing someone and saying yes and getting back to people quickly, hey, is my schedule sustainable? If not, I'm not, if it's not sustainable, I'm gonna make it sustainable and not get back to people for a couple of days every time they email me. 
It's okay. Practice, right? Pra uh, and, and make sure your business model and pricing will sustain you. Not be concerned, well, what if people don't like my price? What if, what if I, I can't, what if I can't help these people who are suffering and who need me? Okay. If you are making your business model about making sure that all the needy get your help, that's not a business model. That's called a charity. And that's fine to have a charity. But even charities have boundaries. Right? You see what I mean? But it's not a charity that you're forming. This is a for-profit business. Be okay with saying that in the mirror. I run a for-profit business in the capitalistic system. Be okay with that because I'm one of the kind ones in the system. I'm one of the ones that are using, providing services that actually help a lot of people, not selling crap, okay? I'm one of the good ones in capitalism. Be okay with saying that in the mirror, okay? And, and see how it feels and let it pass and go, oh, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being a good capitalist. And we have to be admitted, we are in the capitalist system. You can't go, oh, I hate capitalism. Oh, by the way, I run a for-profit business. You can't have that contradiction. You have to be a capitalist if you want to live in the society, okay? Um, if you don't, then go somewhere else, you know, go somewhere else where, or go get a job, you know, don't be a capitalist, don't run a business, right? Um, so you got to have pricing that sustains you, that you're really happy about, that's, that's, that will fulfill your goals and needs. It doesn't have to gouge people, but it's a price that you're really happy with. It's okay. Some people can't work with you. It's okay because you can refer them to other, you, you, whatever price you set, you need to have people that charge less than you and you need to have people charge more than you in your mind anyway. So that when someone says, oh, I can't afford you. Oh, that's okay. Actually, what's even better than when they say I can't afford you, you should say, oh, that's fine. Here's my online course that costs less than working with me one-to-one. -one. You should have different offers at different stage tiers. Your online courses are, if it doesn't matter a thousand people buy it or 10 people buy it. Whereas your one-on-one -on -one clients, you can only work with a certain number of people. So you shouldn't work with people who can't afford you. The people who can't afford you should be buying your online courses or should be working with someone you recommend that charges less. And you should be okay with that because you're only going to work with people who value your, your work at a certain level. And if they don't value your work, that means you need to do more content, right? You need to do be a better job of creating and distributing content. So that's a whole other thing. But um, now let me just end this video by saying this. It is good to stretch yourself to do, to do things that are good customer service or are good, you know, um, good networking. So getting back to people quickly is actually a good thing for customer service and for networking. But I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to get back to people quickly because you feel bad about disappointing people because now you're making decisions that disempower you. What I want you to do is to let the storms pass, practice disappointing people. Don't get back to people for a while. Let the storms pass. Oh, I'm afraid of disappointing them. Oh, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm stronger. And once you become so strong that you're like, oh, I don't mind just getting back to people after a couple of days, then you're ready to stretch yourself. Okay. Now you're ready to stretch yourself professionally and say, okay, let me try getting back to people a little more quickly. Not because I want to please them, but because it's good customer service but because it's good networking that I get back to people a little bit more quickly, but not because I'm going to disappoint them. You're making a decision to stretch yourself because you are grounded and you are strong, not because you oh, don't want to disappoint other people. You see the difference? So this is why if I find myself starting to make a decision because, oh, I'm afraid, essentially, essentially it's about this living from fear versus love. A lot of people I find think they're being loving, but they're really just living a life of fear. I'm, 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 you know, they live a life fearing the judgments of other people. That's not love. That's just fear. They're living a life full of fear. First, you have to love yourself enough and love your purpose enough to say, and love God or love your source enough to say, I trust and love source enough where I don't need any others, any other's love. I don't need anybody else's love except for the love I get from my eternal source. God, your higher self, your soul, your spirit. Okay. 
I don't need anybody else's love, but I'm going to love my eternal source. That's where I get my love. And then once you are strong in that, then you can make truly loving decisions of let me stretch myself a little bit out of love to serve that person well, but not because I'm trying to not disappoint them. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this is interesting for you. Have a thought about what decisions you might be making that are making you weaker instead of making you stronger in love. All right, so I look forward to your comments. I'm gonna give you a minute to add your comment below and I'm gonna take a look at whether I have any comments from the live attendees and whether I wanna call out any of their comments. Let's take a look here. All right, thank you so much. I um, appreciate, <laughs> appreciate your, your support, uh, Captain and Shweta, Becky and Heather. Um, thanks for your comments and Sandy and Greg and Noel. Thank you so much. <laughs> appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, let's see here. Yeah, and Noel says, I'm also working on this in my personal life, right? I'm, I'm in charge of my adult son, uh, caring for that person. And sometimes the decisions I make for him do not make the people in his care team happy. Yet I have to look at the big picture and do what's best for him. It won't always make them happy. Yeah, my gosh, you know, being a, being a parent, it's like, you know, you get to practice this every day, right? So thank you. All right, everyone, go forth and practice making empowered decisions. I wish you well.